up to Sokal avec Brian Littrell. Brian, you still have the pen in your hand and, uh, and the cards to sign? Uh, yes, we were uh, signing some autographs. <laughs> Great. Getting some gifts. So. Great. Some fans have questions for you, and my lovely co host, Isabel, is with them. Hi, Isabel. Hi, Brian. Nice to see you again. Good to see you. I'm with Sarah, and she has a question for you. Hi, Brian. Hi, my Sarah. question is what do your tattoos represent? What do my tattoos represent? Yes. Um, well, I have, um, I have lyrics to a song that I wrote for my wife uh, on the day that we met, the 15th of June, that go all the way around uh, my left, call it a bicep, <laughs> <laughs> I guess. <laughs> and then I have, uh, I have a cross on my shoulder above that, and that's the, uh, the cross that, uh, that I carry with me all the time. So, and it says Rock of Ages because they call me B-Rock, so it's, that's my rock. <rire> Alors, euh, Sarah a demandé euh, à Brian, merci beaucoup, euh, Sarah, tu peux reprendre ta place. Alors, euh, que représentent euh, les deux tatous que tu as? Eh bien, sur un de ses bras, il a euh, les paroles d'une chanson qu'il a écrite euh, pour euh, sa femme. Ils se sont rencontrés un 15 juin. Et de l'autre côté, c'est une croix qu'il porte avec lui à chaque jour euh, de sa vie. Et elle est faite sur euh, la pierre, euh, le rock. C'est pour ça aussi qu'on l'appelle « Be Rock ». Allô? Allô? Quel est ton nom? Cynthia. Cynthia has a question for Hello, you. Hello, Cynthia. How are you? Avec toutes les choses que tu as fait dans ta vie, quel genre de rêve fais-tu? Okay. Well, um, <laughs> I have to say, no, I'm just I'm sorry. You have okay. To <laughs> in English is, with everything you did in your life, what kind of dreams do you get at night? Ooh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um... You know, I am a very, I have to say honestly, I'm a very light sleeper, so I very seldom dream. Um, but when I do dream, uh, you know, I, I dream about uh, uh, the ocean. I dream about my son, uh, older, you know, like, yo, dad, let's go to the, I'm like. <laughs> um, I dream about a, a lot of things, um, you know, uh, uh, a sleeping state is uh, is a very vulnerable state so uh, you know you're you're open to many many things but, thank uh, you those are things thank you Brian alors euh, Cynthia <laughs> avait la question suivante pour euh, Brian avec toutes les choses qu'il a fait dans sa vie quel genre euh, de rêve a-t-il euh, la nuit et là tout le monde fait oh parce qu'on s'attendait à d'autres choses <laughs> <rire> mais il a dit qu'il a le sommeil très, très léger. Mais lorsqu'il rêve, c'est bien sûr à l'océan, à son fils qu'il imagine plus vieux, aller le voir. Yo, papa! Et... Alors, euh, ce, sont Yo, de papa. Beaux... <rire> ce sont de beaux petits rêves avec son sommeil léger. Alors, quel est ton nom? Sarah. Sarah has a question Sarah. for you. Euh, comment fais-tu pour te relever lors d'une mauvaise journée? OK. How do you manage to get back on your feet when you have a bad day? Have a bad day. No, sorry. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, wow. I think, uh, why, you know, everybody has bad days. But I think, um, I think it's just important for me in the position that I am as a Backstreet Boy to, to make as positive of an influence as I can. Um, and I always remember that. I always try to wake up on the right side of the bed. Um, but everybody has bad days. But, uh, you know, looking at my little boy and, and my wife and my family, um, those are things that are very, very uplifting in my life. So uh, as long as they're close to me, it's hard to have a bad day. So. Alors, comme tout le monde a des mauvaises journées quelquefois dans leur vie, on lui a demandé euh, qu'est-ce qu'il faisait pour euh, reprendre sa journée en main lorsque ça allait mal. Eh bien, euh, Brian essaie euh, de penser souvent qu'il est une, une, une influence positive pour euh, les gens qui écoutent euh, les Backstreet Boys. Et là, il est en train de traduire ce que je dis. Il est, il est tellement mignon, c'est tellement impossible de se concentrer avec lui à côté de nous. <rire> Et euh, il pense bien sûr à sa femme, à son fils. C'est quelqu'un de très croyant qui a une grande foi. Alors, il essaie euh, le plus possible de se, euh, de se lever du bon pied. Mathieu, à toi. Thank you very much. Thank you. Merci, Isabelle. Uh, actually, last week, sitting exactly at the exact same place was Howie. Howard. Howard. <laughs> Mr. Howard was with us. And he mentioned uh, going back to the studio, working uh, with, with the Backstreet Boys. Uh -huh. How will you manage to do the, the new... Backstreet Boys record and go on with your uh, solo work. Well, it's uh, it's kind of a juggling act right now, but uh, I was supposed to be in the studio Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of this week. 
Um, but I, I called the, uh, the producers and I called the rest of the management staff and I said, is there any way that we could open the doors on Sunday for me to come in and start my vocal process? So um, I worked all day Sunday and all day Monday and then I had touch-ups on Tuesday and then uh, yesterday uh, flew here. So it's, uh, it is a juggling act, but uh, I mean the Backstreet Boys are a huge part of my life and always will be and, uh, and I'll be a Backstreet Boy first uh, before anything. So. Great. We were talking about the Backstreet Boys. We've been getting tons and tons of emails about mm -hmm. the fact that Kevin is yeah. leaving the Backstreet Boys. I don't want to go too deep on the subject, but I want to know how do you feel personally, especially uh, being personally. I'm I'm sad. Um, I'm a little disappointed. Um, I, it, it's a little uncomfortable sometimes being in the studio and knowing that he's in his house in California right up the way. Uh, I feel like calling him and saying, "Hey, can you come and do this vocal?" <laughs> but um, it, you know, I it, it's a uh, it's very bittersweet, I would, I would have to say, because I'm happy for him as an individual. But, you know, I have, I have sad feelings because he's the, he is the original reason why I'm a Backstreet Boy, period. And uh, I'm grateful for that. But I'm, but I'm very supportive of him in his individual endeavors. And um, that's what we will continue to do is, is support him and, and his decision making. But at the same time, we want to still continue to carry the torch with the Backstreet Boys. So. I hope that the fans are receptive to the new record. I think they will. <laughs> Alors, je vais demander, parce que c'est officiel, Kevin Richardson euh, a quitté les Backstreet Boys. Pour ceux qui ne savaient pas, c'est une triste nouvelle. Il dit, je suis triste, mais en même temps, je suis content pour lui parce qu'il va pouvoir faire ses projets lui-même. Mais ce qui me rend encore plus triste, c'est que Kevin est la raison pour laquelle je suis un Backstreet Boys à la base. Puis juste avant ça, je lui demandais comment tu vas faire pour faire les deux, faire travailler ta carrière solo et avec le nouvel album des Backstreet Boys. Et puis, il disait que, dans le fond, c'est toujours essayer de trouver des trucs pour euh, avoir du temps, avoir du temps et rire de moi pendant que je fais la traduction, mais euh, toujours avoir du temps euh, pour aller en studio quand, euh, quand des fois on pense pas avoir le temps. Comme aller travailler un dimanche. Yeah, I mean, working on Sunday. To, uh, record. Yes, working on Sunday, but uh, I do what uh, do what I have to do to uh, to be a part of it. So great, great. So we're gonna be a little more uh, positive, okay. more happy. We're gonna play a little game called. Okay. Lifespan with Brian Little. Lifespan with me? Yeah. With me! With you! <laughs> so, it's simple. I'm just going to take some uh, moments in your life. Okay. I'm going to ask you how you felt uh, at that. Okay. So, when you were five years old, what was your biggest dream? Wow. My biggest dream when I was five was to... Uh, uh, my <laughs> <laughs> um, I would have to say... Wow. Wow. My first love was uh, was soccer. Soccer? My very first love was soccer. But um, in, I spent, uh, when I was five years old, I spent two months in the hospital in the first grade because I had an uh, illness that put me in the hospital. So I think for me as a five-year-old boy, was uh, my biggest dream was getting out of the hospital and, and being able to run around and be healthy. And, uh, and it came true. So. Great. Yeah. Alors quand il avait 5 ans, il, euh, il disait être un joueur de soccer et puis il dit euh, j'étais à l'hôpital et il dit plein de choses comme ça et puis finalement il dit que c'est un peu un rêve quand même d'avoir pu faire de la chanson comme ça donc il est quand même très heureux de, de ce qui se passe. Actually, I've been told that we don't have the time to continue with the little lifespan thing, but I'm going to ask you. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to jump from 5 years old to let's say in 40 years. Okay. <laughs> in 40 years yeah, from now? In 40 years from okay, now. Okay, I'll be 71. One, 71. <laughs> when you look back at your life, when you're uh, whatever age <laughs> you, uh, you mentioned, uh, what, what would you want to think about your life, looking back on what you did? Uh, I want people to know me as a loving husband and a loving father and a man of faith, and that's it. That's, that's it. it? That's it. And I'm going to tell you, you're going to be remembered as a great guy. Thank you, man. I have to tell you. I Alors, so. il veut que les gens se souviennent de lui comme un très bon mari, un très bon, juste une, une très bonne personne, un très bon père. Donc, il est très content de... Il dit, en fait, il veut que les gens se souviennent de lui comme étant un maudit bon gars. C'est tout ce qu'il veut. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, man. Good luck with Appreciate everything. It. Nous, on va faire une courte pause. Tout de suite après, on vous présente des clips. Ça passe sous sa case de Christina Aguilera. Merci, là.